Hello, sports gamers, and welcome to another edition of the ECL Elite coverage here in the spring season. And boy, do we have a great matchup for you today here on our primetime Sunday's first matchup here. H-Reds against Goons coming up a little bit later. HV71 taking on YMCA Esports. It should be an absolute barn burner here. Both of these games, I'm very excited. I'm joined here, of course, by Brandon, a.k.a. b Aja. And uh, how are you feeling about this matchup today? Who would you, how do you think this first one's going to go? Oh, I'm so excited, Sid. And first, we have a playoff rematch from round one last season. You have to remember, H-Reds, despite being dominant in their run, Goons gave them a run for their money, each game being decided by one goal, multiple going to overtime. This is a team that's gotten off to a, hard, a hot start themselves as well, so this could be a really interesting matchup in a team in Atres that's looking to continue that undefeated streak starting out and continue that championship crown defense. Maybe Goons has something for them. And then in our second matchup, like you said, HV71, a team that's kind of surprised at the start, sees themselves in that playoff position while YMCA trying to Defy the odds, a team that was projected to finish last coming into the season. So two teams with a lot to prove, two teams that have met before the playoffs. It's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait to take this in with you here on an Easter Sunday. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you mentioned how this season has gone so far. We can go ahead and take a look at some of the latest results going on here so far in this elite season as, well, I mean, you know, things are... Things are getting off to a pretty quick start. We always talk about how quickly this, uh, you know, season can move along. We are still early. There's ground to make up here, but you don't want to get in a hole too, too early. You know, we've seen ZSC Esports taking two points off of Atreids there. Both of them going to overtime. Atreids getting the victory in each one, but you can't help but think if they keep getting, you know, these close calls. You mentioned it in the playoffs. Three out of the four games against Goons went to overtime. There they are against ZSC, a team who narrowly missed the playoffs. So we see a lot of teams kind of getting better and giving Atreids a run for their money here. What stands out to you? Yeah, and I have to agree with you. And I think something else that stands out to me, how about HV71 stealing a point versus Fralunda? You talk about how those points can be so crucial. I know it's easy to maybe overlook the first couple weeks of the season because it is so early. It's hard to really decipher which teams are maybe those top contenders and which teams might or might not get into the playoffs. But when you're able to get those extra points, when you get around week four, week five, they really start to add up. And when you're in that race for that seventh, eighth, and ninth spot between what could get you in or keep you out of the playoffs you kind of start to look towards those earlier games like man if maybe we could have stolen three points instead of one that might have made the difference so every game matters even if it's this early you're seeing some teams like yip yavoska like hv71 like zsc esports steal some points against some of these top teams that we'd expect to be in the playoffs might not be something that looks as big now but something that could maybe grow and flourish a little bit more as we get deeper into the season yeah, absolutely. I mean, you mentioned how much the points matters here as we take a look at the standings so far in this year. You can already see things starting to take shape. For Lunda, of course, still uh, up at the top there, 6-0 and undefeated. Atred's looking to continue that here. But as you said, against the Goons team, which has been able to give them a bit of a run for their money and technically are ahead of them in the standings right now, just from, you know, four games in hand, though, for Atred's. But Going back to what you were talking about, about how every single point matters, especially for those last seeds in the playoffs, I mean, it, it really can come down to that. If you're tied, it can even come down to goal differential as well. So I think you hit the nail right on the head. And when you think think of a team like ZSC Esports taking those two points um, off of H-Reds there, absolutely massive. You know, no one expects them to really get the, you know, win that series or pick up even more than, you know, maybe a, a lucky point from getting to overtime, but they picked up two. Those are two points, which are going to, you know, work wonders for them down the stretch. Yeah, and something that's so intriguing to me is that many of those teams that you're seeing on the left board, they were not in the playoffs last season. As of now, only the teams in the top three, Fralunda, Goons, and Atreds, were in the playoffs last season. Falcon Coal Miners coming back to the ECL, obviously, this season. They've had a fast start. Roots, though, they were outside looking in. They were in that 9th or 10th spot. They see themselves picking up early points. Same thing for ZSC, as you mentioned. They were in around that 10th spot. Picking up points early, HV71, a team that was in the relegation series last year, picking up some extra points, see themselves in a good position right now. And even Yip Yavoskla coming back to the ECL Pro Division, or from the ECL Pro Division to Elite once again, picking up points early. So it's one of those things that might be early, but some of these points that you accumulate, they start to kind of add up once you get towards the end of the season. And maybe one of these teams that are currently behind you, if you're 
duking it out with them towards week five, week six for one of those last few spots, it could very well be the difference between if you're playing playoff hockey or if you're watching at home. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, speaking of playoff hockey, we likely have two teams that will be in the playoffs here going up against each other in this first matchup. And Hreds against Goons here. You can just take a look at the goals for goals against differential. Of course, Goons have uh, twice as many games played as them, but, you know, the ratio still in their favor. But just what you expect from Hreds there, you know, pretty decent goals for and not allowing a whole heck of a lot of goals against what kind of stands out for you here? Yeah, and I think it is that goals against that stands out to me around the goal a game allowed so far. And really, it's about what you would expect from H Reds, just pure class overall from this team. And it really starts from the defensive end on forward. The thing that H Reds does so well is they turn that good defense in the great offensive opportunities. And if you're not able to kind of get some chances of your own and maybe hem them in their own zone a little bit, it becomes really, really hard to beat them. But like we said, we saw in the playoffs last year, Goons saw a little bit of success against them, being able to compete with with them maybe they can find something here sin it's going to be a lot of interesting things to watch between these two especially considering the goons returns a lot of that team from last season yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, one thing they will have to be careful of is they got a pretty low penalty kill percentage right now. So yeah. at least try to stay out of the box or hopefully if they've worked on that penalty kill just a little bit here. But we'll move over now to the lineups for both of these teams. And it's pretty much what you expect from a treads. Why fix what isn't broken? Villa Poika, Benito and Nikki Dangles, the front three back on the fence is Domi and King of Apes. And of course, between the pipes. Pays himself and for goons. It's Piku Roger, Keskitalo, and Lighten in up front. Jay Toro and Kriketsi on the back end. And Finn Kona locking things down this time between the pipes. Goons seemingly going with a goaltender duel between him and uh, Sapriks, I believe. And uh, Finn Kona this time getting the nod in net. And, uh, you know, quite a big uh, matchup here for him uh, to take on Atreds with a definite potent offense. Yeah, he's going to definitely have to be sharp in this one. But Vincona's a guy that's been around a while. He's been able to make those big saves in those big games for championships, for money, for tournament rings. So this is a guy that he might be playing a really good team in Atrez on the other side, but he's not one to shy away from the big moment at all. He has been able to step up and play a huge role for teams in the past. I know Goon's going to hope he can do that again here today, even if it may not be in that same setting. But like we said, Sid, every game matters. And Goon's how about making a statement if they could pull off a winner or two here again? this age red squad yeah absolutely i mean again even just getting a couple points like zsc did but a win would be absolutely massive and it would also knock away h red's undefeated streak early on like i think last season they went up you know over almost half the season without suffering a loss and it took for lunda to do that but without further ado let's get into those head-to-head -head matchups here and as we always do we'll start off with the battle of the two centers here it will be benito Taking on Cascatalo here, and again, the game's differential is uh, looks quite significant here early on in the season, but you can kind of see from the pace that both of these guys are on, obviously very comparable. Yeah, and it's going to be a lot of fun to watch because obviously we know Benito, one of the elite centers in all of the ECL, has been for so, so long. And he's a guy that always just seems to step up in those big moments. And Cascatalo on the other end, the guy that's been very solid, though, for this Goons team as well. And I think that's something that they have going for them going into this matchup. Obviously, we know about the chemistry that H-Reds has, but Goons is a team that returns a lot of experience and returns a lot of that chemistry. Cascatalo was in the middle of that both literally and and figuratively at that center spot. So it's going to be really interesting to see how those two match up, see what they've learned about each other, especially with the form that Goons have been in to start out. That center matchup could be really something to look out for for both these guys to step up. Yeah, absolutely, especially with the lower face-off percentages in this one. You know, something's got to give. Someone's got to be able to take their advantage at some point. But we'll move on now to the battle of the wingers here. And it doesn't get much more elite in, when you think about those that h reds pairing. You know, Villa Poika, Nikki Dangles. Villa Poika not off to, you know, uh, necessarily the, uh, the point-scoring cart. Uh, sorry, point scoring pace that you would expect, you know, after what he did last season, but obviously still early, still plenty of time left here. What stands out for you in this matchup? 
Yeah, and I think that's something I'd have to agree with, too, is that it is kind of shocking with Villapueca, a guy that led the league in goals last season, only starting out with one in the four games played. But I think you have to look at Leighton in a little bit, too. Ten goals in his eight games played. He's been kind of the guy to step up and put the puck in the net for this Goons team when they have needed that big goal. And something else that really kind of strikes at me is that both of these wingers for Goons, they're not afraid to shoot the puck. When they have that chance, they are going to put it on net. More times than not, means that you're going to have to be either in front of them to block that chance or your goaltending is going to have to be really sharp. Obviously, we know that FaZe is going to be able to make those big saves, but I'm going to be interested to see how these two wingers and goons step up. I think that could really be where this game or series kind of changes, and it could be the difference between if HRS does what many would expect them to do and pick up four points, or if maybe Goons could steal a win or two in this game. It depends on if these two wingers and Piku, Ro Roger, and Lightning can score. They've done so so far, but different tests here against this HRS team. Yeah, obviously it's going to be a big, big test for the offense to see if they can get some of those chances against the staunch defense that H-Reds have. And we'll take a look at the battle of those defensive pairings right now, of course. Uh, it's going to be Domi, King of Apes, and then Jay Toro taking on Kriketsi here. Yeah, this is also going to be really fun to watch because obviously we know about Domi and King of Apes. They are the anchors of that Age Reds team, the way they're able to lock teams in and really hone in and not allow you to get past that blue line. They're so, so stout at that end, which is kind of why I felt that the two wingers for Goons were going to have to step up so big. But the two defensemen are going to have to contribute just as much, if not almost a little bit more because of the fours and H Reds have on the other side, NJ Toro and Kriketsi. And something you have to keep in mind, we've talked about that play off series that they had last season a few times well in all of those games we mentioned it was one goal it was a lot of two to one three to two scores so both Jay Toro and Kriketsi they've proven that they can have some success against this H Reds team they've stepped up before they're gonna have to do so again especially when you have two stellar defensemen two of the best defensemen in all of Europe in Domain King of Ace playing against you on the other side yeah, absolutely. It's the blue line stand of H Reds. We talk about it all the time. We see it all the time. It can be so, so difficult to penetrate. But I mean, you think back, you look at Goons as well. My, my eyes are always kind of going to Kriketsi. I, I wondered when he switched to defense if he'd still have that physical presence. Well, uh, 66 hits in eight games. I, I'd, I'd say he still has that back there. So. We'll take a look now at the goaltending matchup, what some could argue is uh, perhaps the most important uh, matchup between these two teams. And I mean, what else can you say? Phase off to a great start with that save percentage. Yeah, and just about what you would expect of FaZe, and the thing that really stands out to me with him is two shutouts in the four games that he has played as well. So not only if he, is he saving the puck, not allowing goals to get past them, but in 50% of the games so far, he's let a donut up. He hasn't allowed anything to go past him. And it's one of those things with FaZe. You always know he's going to be able to make those big saves. And obviously last season, the regular season, he wasn't statistically what you would maybe have expected him to be. And obviously Unique for Sawo kind of stole the show in that sense. But FaZe so far, the start he has gotten off to has been absolutely amazing. While on the other end, Fincona and Supreaks kind of splitting time between one another. But in the two games Fincona has gotten, he's taken advantage of that opportunity. He's going to hope to maybe increase those numbers a little bit here against an HRS team that is so, so dangerous, especially with that forward quarter he's going to be facing against. So this goaltending battle could be very well interesting. And it also could be, like you said, Sin, what is the difference maker in these games? I mean, how many times have we seen that one goaltender come up with that huge save through he swifts the momentum? Both FaZe and Fincona have that ability. So this is going to be really fun to watch and could be something to keep tabs on. Definitely. And, you know, in a matchup like this, talk about may, per, the chance to maybe increase some of those numbers <laughs> against the potent offense that Atrebs have. I think Finn Kona will be facing his fair share of shots and some of those great A opportunities. So really having a chance to sort of, you know, prove himself as a goaltender here and maybe kind of, you know, put his name in the hat for being more of the uh, 1A in this situation for Goons here. But I believe we're uh, getting just about ready to get underway here as the teams are... Uh, looking to uh, search and, uh, and things like that. But I mean, this, this is big. This is a rematch from last, from la last season playoffs. And again, you could even argue goons was one of the teams that put up the biggest fight against Atreds with the amount of games that went to overtime with how close that was. But on the flip side, Atreds is just such a good team in overtime with, I mean, they won all three of those games in the playoffs. They won the two games against ZSC in overtime so far this season. It's just, there's something about Atreds, a clutch factor that, it doesn't necessarily always show on the ice, but there's they always find a way to get that done. I mean, what do you kind of attribute that to? 
think a lot of it just kind of has to do with the composure that this team has. It's something that we've talked about for Lunda really having an advantage on is their composure in those big situations. But it's something that is always so fun to watch is because obviously they bring that confidence element. They know that they have that ability, but it's a lot different when you are in that crunch time situation facing a team that is kind of getting at you a little bit and you're having to face that adversity. It's easy to be confident when things are going well. It's a little bit more difficult to be confident when you do have to kind of overcome a few things. And it just feels like HRS, no matter what the situation, they're able to respond the way that they need to. And we kind of saw that from them at certain points last season. Goons, the team that were the eight seed, disappointed a little bit in the regular season, really fought up with H-Reds, and it very well could have been a series that went to six games with the way things went. They would find a way every single time in overtime, and even a few times when they were down and had to come up with a goal late to even bring it to overtime to come up with that big play. So it's just one of those things you always know that the game is never over with them, and they just kind of feel like they know how to always react in the right way to whatever they're facing. That's such a huge thing for any team. It separates some of those elite teams to those teams that are kind of middle of the pack. Atreds shows that ability, and I wouldn't be shocked if maybe we get a player or two that shows that one more time here tonight. Yeah, absolutely. As uh, the teams have matched up uh, now are in the lobbies. And I really like what you said about, you know, teams just kind of always finding a way and maintaining that composure and playing a similar style. We see that all the time from the teams that we label as great here in the elite division. And if, you know, teams that uh, want to be uh, great, you know, it's they always have their foot on the gas pedal. And uh, looks like we will be getting a re-lobby here, maybe some ping issues or something like that. So we'll be able to bring that to you. Of course, it's, you know, we're just building the suspense here on this uh, primetime Sunday matchup. But yeah, back on the top, I mean, it's, they keep their foot on the gas pedal. And that's something that we've seen from Ferlunda and Havu in the past, especially. Uh, but then that h -Reds brings to the table now. It doesn't matter what that score is. They usually play the same way. They'll never sit back. They'll never play for a tie. They're always kind of trying to go for the throat because they have trust in their goaltending and their defense. And, you know, they have trust in the guy next to them. So you see that. And when h -Reds play, you see them playing as a unit. There's no real standout star because kind of all of them in a way is a star in their own right and they play together so 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 well yeah and what play to look at better to kind of attest to that than the way that they won the ecl championship last season late in the third period tie game they came into the series up three nothing well Falanda came in and quite frankly, they punched him in the mouth in that game four, nearly took home that game five and we we're kind of thinking like man if Falanda could maybe take this game five they can come back and win this thing and all of a sudden, it's a tie game. They're kind of sitting back a little bit, and they didn't just wait, take their laurels, and move it into overtime. Benito found a way, got into the zone, and scored that thing with 0 .1, 0 .2 seconds left. And that just kind of goes to show you that H-Reds, it doesn't matter how little time is on the clock, how much time is on the clock, or how much they are down by. They are going to keep going. They're not going to stray from the way they play. And why do so when you're able to perfect that style so, so well the way they do? Whether they're up by three or down by three, they're not going to change from what they do well. And when you do what you do well to the level that they do it, why not? Yeah, absolutely. It's very, very rare that we've seen h -Reds put in a situation where they've had to kind of really alter their play style. But uh, when they have been in that situation, you know, and, and the, you know, the, the changes they make, again, it's still able to work for them. They're, they rarely really are, uh, are, are a team that sacrifices defense on the side of things. So, I mean, this is going to be, you know, a heck of a two games between these two guys. And we'll give you a quick look at, of course, you know, the, what these teams are playing for throughout this spring season as they did in the winter season. Uh, first place would net the for, uh, the team 6,000 euro here. And if that team, once again, is H-Reds, they walk home with an additional 10K euro automatically for saying we're the best team in the world and there's no, no grand final is needed. And I mean, I know we're hoping to see, you know, another team knock them off the mountain just so we get that grand final. But H-Reds is saying we're going for that three-peat. Yeah, and you know, a, a quote that keeps ringing to me is when we talked to Benito after they won that championship. You remember we said, Sin, we hate losing more than we love winning. So to be honest with you, I think it would be a bit of a more kind of ringing thing to them to lose and not take that 6,000 home and have to play a grand final. Then it's just win it outright and go for the $10,000 and have to play out for it. Obviously the rest of these teams hoping they can make it to that grand final. It'd be a lot of fun to watch because there's a little bit of 
EU pride on the line as well. I don't think anyone, any one of these teams want to see HRS just go ahead and sweep it out. I think one of them want to play them for that $10,000. So maybe adds a little bit more here to this season, which has been already to an exciting start. I can't wait to see how the rest of this unfolds. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. This matchup, very, very important, kind of, to uh, see if uh, there are some holes in the armor of Hreds here. As Goon's looking to poke some more of them, and you think back to the matchup against ZSC, you know, two overtime games, that could be, you know, a bit of a sign here. So Hreds looking to shut down that sort of narrative immediately here in this game. They enter the zone. Domi down low. Villapoika sends it back up top. Shot on net. Rebound. <laughs> Fincona got back there. It was a dangerous chance, but blocked in front. Piku Roger. Leading the rush back the other way at four goons are in their home black jerseys. Eight reds in that beautiful off-white and red. Battle for it in the neutral zone. Kroketsi makes a nice play. Lightning with a beautiful move. A toe drag again. Almost getting the shot off, but bumped from behind at the last moment. Domi over to King of Apes who will lead the rush down the right wing side. Nice poke at the line. Will force eight reds to reset. Now entering the zone is Villapoika. Kroketsi has the puck. Now looking to reset now in the zone, but a nice pace to start this one off. Jay Toro now with the puck. And having a trouble entering the blue line, of course. Our goons here, we talk about it all the time. Hreds, one of the best team defenses at the blue line that you'll see as they enter the zone. Benito almost with the shot across. Filipoika tries one again, that gets blocked. Keskatalo now leading them back the other way. Lightning over to Kerketsi, who entered the zone. We gets the puck swept away by a great defensive skill stick of King of Apes. And so far, pretty uh, pretty hectic pace right there as we approach the halfway point in this period. Yeah, it's been pretty interesting to watch. You're seeing both teams get a few chances. And I think you said it best there, Sid, that red wall of Hreds kind of showing itself so far. But Goon is trying to poke a hole through. We'll see if they can break through. And there's a nice intercept right there, but now a little bit of a confusion there from Goons as they get the puck turned over, the pass out front. Nikki Dangles just couldn't get the shot away, but a nice poke at the blue line. We've talked about it all the time over the past uh, few seasons here, just how much the two-way game of Nikki Dangles has improved. I think at this point, we can stop refer referring to it as improved and just say, yeah, that, that defensive game is a massive part of his game and a huge reason for the success of Atres with the shot on from a range. Faze makes a save and covers it. Yeah, and that's a big save because if you notice there, right at that pad, if that rebound pokes out, I believe that was Kroketsi, he was sitting there ready for that thing for it to pop out. And if it does, there's nothing but an open cage for him there. So a nice save there from FaZe and a bit of a fortunate break there for his goalie to be able to cover that up and not allow that rebound. Really good at control there as Hreds look to break it out. Nikki Dangles trying to enter the zone, but good pokes, and they'll be forced to reset. Good job from Goon so far. They're making it a bit more difficult than Hreds perhaps is accustomed to entering that offensive zone. Domi, dangerous pass over, almost taken away by Lightning, but he couldn't control it. Now King of Apes. Sent over to Benito, who enters the zone. Villapoika giving pursuit. Gets nailed, but Benito has the puck. Trying to send it up front to Nikki Dangles. No dice. King of Apes with an interesting pass. It could have led to some trouble there. But Lightning unable to catch it. Does give good pressure to Domi. He's going to have to be careful. But he works that puck out. Villapoika with speed down the left wing side. Enters the zone on time. Unable to get the shot away was Nikki Dangles, but he stays relentless on the pursuit. That, that collapse right now from Goons really preventing those passes from behind the net from finding their intended targets. But Hreds with the puck once again. Willapoika now to Nikki Dangles. We'll work it back to Domi who loses it. Now it's chance for Goons coming back the other way. It looks like a puck hit off a, a skate or something. They just couldn't figure out a way to make that two on two work. Got to feel like that's a bit of a missed opportunity. They had a lot of space to perhaps enter the zone and they squandered it. Villapoika now with Nikki Dangles, numbers for Hreds. Nikki Dangles trying to hit Benito on the trail, unable to connect. Both teams right now, at least early on in this period, having a bit of trouble finding some of their intended targets. Now Villapoika sent back. Domi will have it. Time ticking away in the final minute of the first period. A fast real-time minute of deflection, and Finn Kona makes the save there. No big rebound either been a couple long-range shots for either team that had a chance to go in. Yeah, and Fincona, just like FaZe, had to be sharp on the other end. He had to be sharp right there, and he was. That was a potential chance for Atres, but they're so good at those on-the-zone face-off plays. We'll see if they can get one here. 
10 seconds left. It will be real time, but Lightning taking the puck out for Goons. He does find Piku Raja. Piku Raja with a sauce in front, but the only man there to retrieve it was Villapoika. Good defensive play, and that will do it. First period over. Score still knotted 0-0. Zero to zero. Yes, and about what we expected, a really tight game, defense and goaltending showing up and showing out here though through the first 20 minutes. And you kind of mentioned how the team's having a few passes, a few plays where you could see there's a missed opportunity where a pass is a little bit missed or a play is broken up that could have been an opportunity. But I think a lot of it does go to attest to that great defense. H Reds being one of the great defensive teams in the ECL, as we mentioned, but Goon's a team that maybe even is a little bit underrated defensively in the ECL. We talked about when these two did play in the playoffs, each game decided by one goal three of them going to overtime. So this is a Goons team that can play well defensively against the best of them. You match up against an HRS team that obviously one of the elite defensive teams in all of NHL, you kind of get this result. So it's going to be really interesting to see who can break through first because so far neither team just really has that momentum to start out. So after the first period, it really seems like this thing is for the taking. Yeah, absolutely. And eight dreads uh, probably don't like the feeling of that. They're a team, you know, more used to being able to take control in these games. So they're going to want to figure out a way to do that here. But as you said, yeah, Goons, they seem to they seem to ha have found something against eight dreads here. Because, again, Goons, you know, making it into the playoffs on the eighth seed in the last season, you know, definitely not a guaranteed spot by any means. But for some reason, against the top team like eight dreads, they, they, you know, are able to really put up a good fight here. So going to see if they can, uh, you know, capitalize on that. Here's Jay Toro leading the puck out. Nice pass up to Piku Roger. Nice move to the middle there. Looked like he went between the legs or behind his back right there. Tough to see, but Lightning now in front. Can't get the shot away. Puck sent back to the port. Keskitalo covering for Jay Toro. Jay Toro can't retrieve the puck, and now resetting is a Reds. Filipoika enters the zone here. Trying to send over to King of Apes, who does get the shot away after it was deflected in the slot, but no dice. Finn Kona there to block it away, but here comes the pressure now. Atrez leading it back in, a beautiful spin pass from Nicky Dangles. Benito down low, trying to send out front to Nicky Dangles. Can't connect. Chance on the rebound, but Finn Kona will get the cover on it. Yeah, you know, Sid, I think you said something pretty interesting there is that it kind of feels like Goons has found that something. And I think that's the one thing that I think has separated HRS from all these other teams. It's that no one's been able to find that one thing yet that they've been able to kind of use as the point of attack. What can you use as that X factor to kind of stay with HRS and get them on their heels a little bit? Maybe Goons can find that something and they're going to have a chance maybe get that first goal here on the power play to start out here in the second. Yeah, this will be a, an opportunity for Goons on the power play. And this can happen to Atrez. We've talked about it a bit. They can get themselves into uh, a, a bit of uh, penalty trouble from uh, here and again. And that will be Benito sitting in the box. They're center here. So Nicky Dangles will be taking the draws here. An excellent opportunity for Goons power play, who start off uh, one for three with 33%. So maybe get some chances. They are able to keep that puck in the zone. Lightning. Begins to set things up, slow things down. Kroketsi now at the point. Over to Piku Roger. Delayed a little too long. Got that puck poked off him. Maybe tried to look to the middle there for a quick pass, but was unable to connect. Now Goons leading back the other way. Keskitalo does gain the line, but not for too long as King of Apes makes a good play, and here they come. Counterattack the other way. Nikki Dangles, the King of Apes now. Over to Villapoika, but good intercept there by, I believe, uh, Kroketsi. And uh, nothing came of it. Jay Tor now being pressured by King of Apes, who on the penalty kill is way up in the other zone. If the, you don't think this team is confident, well, just look at the right defenseman there for checking on the penalty kill. Nicky Dangles delaying as long as he can. And, I mean, just, just an, a clinical penalty kill from Atreids. Yeah, this is a team that will throw that forecheck around a little bit just to kind of mix things up and throw a different look at you. They've been known to do that. And King of Apes just perfecting it there on the PK little bit. Absolutely, as they're back to even strength now. We saw a nice chance from Goons a minute ago, and one right there from Benito, which looks like it gave Fincona a little bit of trouble, but he is able to squeeze the legs together and smother it. Yeah, and so far, Fincona has been sharp, but a little bit of a disappointing power play there for Goons. We kind of talked about how finding that one thing that you can take advantage of against Atrez is so key. That power play could have been one, but there we go, Sin, our first goal. That was a heck of a shot there from Benito, who was none too pleased about being denied on the previous look. A quick little bang bang play. Back to the point man, back to the center, who rifles at home. Top cheddar. I mean, excellent job. 
Yeah, it doesn't get much better than that. And how about Benito making the mistake, getting himself in the box, putting his team in a little bit of trouble, comes right back out and takes advantage of his opportunity to bury that one home. And man, I was just kind of saying how maybe Goons would look back at that power play if they don't win this game. Kind of a missed opportunity for them there. Well, now that really amounts a little bit more as H Red's Raptor killing that off, take advantage of scoring one. Yeah, we can definitely see momentum changes uh, from solid penalty kills. And here we go again. Benito forces the play. Toe passes over. And it was intercepted by Jay Toro there before Villapoy could get his stick on it. But h -Red still in the zone. Nikki Dangles back around to Villapoyka. Back up top and back down low. A lot of puck moving here. Villapoyka trying to go behind the net. But Jay Toro was there to snuff it out. Slap pass opportunity. Piku Raja wins the race. L skating but poked off by Domi. Great recovery there. Piku Roger doing his utmost to get some momentum for his team. Good work down low from Goon. Sent out front. But Lightning unable to get a stick on the counterattack the other way. Nikki Dangles now back to King of Apes. King of Apes looking, and Nikki Dangles has it once again down low. Up top now. Beautiful stick work from King of Apes. Opened up a lane, didn't opt to take the shot. Nikki Dangles now behind the net to Benito, and King of Apes with it now. Works back down low. Nikki Dangles fights off the pressure. Goes back to Domi. To the middle to Villapoyka. Nikki Dangles unable to get the shot away. But this is insane zo time from h -Reds. King of Apes down low to Benito. Goons can't get this puck out. Nikki Dangles looks for the wrap but unable to capitalize. Still has it behind the net here. Support now from Benito. Dangerous pass and shot on. Backhand on net. And Finn Cota once again had to be sharp. That might be the best established cycle that we've seen from either of these teams so far. And you kind of mentioned that HRS just relentless there in the offensive zone, buzzing with a few chances. Nice job there from Goons to kind of keep things intact and not let him get anything easy. Thank you, Roger. Now a bit of L skating kind of sauced it towards the goaltender phase, forced to make a stop, and we'll get that cover as well. Yeah, and kind of going back a little bit to that quick cycle that they had, it's so important to kind of stay intact defensively there. If you give HRS that little bit of space, they'll take advantage and get that score. So maybe that defensive stop could lead to something here with Goons being in the offensive zone. They desperately need something to come of it here as they will keep it in. Bit of a stumble there, but kept in momentarily. Yeah, Piku Roger gets it back. Lightning down low. Yeah, shot on from Cascatala, but can't capitalize, but they're keeping it alive. Trying to get some offensive zone time of their own here, but that's aggressive defense coming out from h -Reds. And Domi leading it up the left wing side. Bit of stop at the line. Villapoyka now back to Benito. Benito sent to Villapoyka. Beautiful sauce back down low now. Benito looking for the pass, sends it back to King of Apes. King of Apes doesn't wrist it on. Low shot. The rebound was there. Nikki Dangles couldn't get a stick on it, and... Goons will just opt to kill the rest of that period and maybe feeling a bit fortunate to only be down by one. Yes, and you know the term survive in advance, usually used in a tournament format, but I think you can apply that to period by period as well, especially facing a teams like H Reds that's kind of starting to heat up a little bit the more that this game goes on. And I think if you're Goons, if you tell them going into this game, hey, it's a one goal game going into the third period, you're down, but is this a one goal game? I don't think they would be terribly mad at that. I mean, it's not like they're playing a bad game. Five shots on net. The only difference is really that time on attack where Adres has we've been able to establish the zone a little bit more and a little bit more firmly than Goons has so far. But overall, Goons not playing a bad game by any stretch of the imagination and they're keeping up with Adres. I think the big question is, can they find that one goal? Can they capitalize on that one opportunity to tie this thing up while doing what maybe the hardest part of all this is, keeping HRES at bay in the process. So this is going to be really interesting. This next goal could very well decide who's going to win this game. Yeah, I think you uh, hit the nail right on the head right there with, uh, you know, can they find that offense without sacrificing the defense? And that's kind of going to be the huge, huge uh, test here in this third period is a dangerous turnover right there. Boone's unable to capitalize on it, and Atreds will bring it back the other way. Nice play by Jay Toro, but still coming up with it are Atreds. Boone's now trying to work this out, but the relentless forechecking pressure coming out from Atreds. They're right back in the zone. Villapoyka shot on, goes wide. King of Apes now over to Domi. The shot stopped by Fincona yet again. Not a big rebound, but that's, that's the place you want to shoot you want that rebound to pop out. Yeah, and we've seen both of these two teams go for those rebound plays. It hasn't necessarily worked yet. Both goaltenders have been stout in those so far. But speaking of goalies, how about Fincona? Absolutely stellar so far through the first 40 minutes. Yeah, he's really, really kind of been a difference maker here as the pressure from Atreds has come. And that read from Nikki Dangles almost spelled trouble. Shot on, rebound, scores!
Rangers. Benito, his second of the game off the shot from Nikki Tangles. B Major called it. Eventually, the rebounds will pay off. It pays off there. Atret take a 2 0 lead. Yeah, it was right on cue from what we were talking about there, Sid. They kept going for those rebounds. Both teams were, and with the way that this game plays, if you keep going at it, it's only a matter of time where that puck is going to pout or excuse me, that puck is going to bounce out in an advantageous position. You just have to be in the right place at the right time to take advantage of it. Benito was there. It was perfectly played. And now Adrets with that big next goal we talked about making this a 2-0 game could be absolutely huge though for chances of taking this home. And this is where Adrets gets so dangerous. The second their advantage gets even pressed. Here we go. Goons has to extend, but now it's a two on one. Coming back to the They look for the rebound again. Villapoika just can't get it there. Well, that's what we talk about. The second Goons has to open things up. Adrets senses that, and their counterattack goes on full display here. Chop over to Domi. And now Benito will look to exit. Goons trying to forecheck, trying to get something. They almost forced a turnover there. Lightning gets it in the neutral zone, but gets hit for his troubles and back the other way. Nikki Dangles and Benito down low around the net. Benito has it, tries to send out front. Villapoika was home, but no, no connection on the pass. Benito, quick shot there. <laughs> almost got another opportunity. Looking like they're feeding Benito quite a bit. He tries to send it over to Villapoika. Good defense from Jay Toro. Pass out front, and Benito scores! Hat trick hero! Three to nothing for Adred's relentless forechecking pressure leads to another tally. And how about Benito? You had just mentioned how they kind of seem to be trying to give him the puck at will, and they do so again, and it worked out again right there. His third goal, he came in leading this team in goals with four goals in four games. With a performance like that, you can see why. Just all over the ice here the last 15 minutes or so, and h -Reds from being a tie game that completely taking over, all on the stick of their captain and Benito. What a performance. Absolutely. I mean... It's just the second you have to open up the game against Atreds, they could just capitalize even more. And here they go back again. Almost another opportunity for Benito on the doorstep. Piku Roger trying to make something happen as Nikki Dangles there covering for King of Apes on defense. Lightning now has the puck. Goons, they got to find an answer quickly here if they want a chance to come back. What a poke from Nikki Dangles. He'll actually be the first to that puck now. We'll have Villapoika passes it back to Benito. L skating there. He gets bumped off the puck momentarily, still fighting for it. Jay Toro will work it out. Kerketsi now jumping up in the back and they've got to try to put as many guys on offense as possible but just like that the blue line it's taken away. Nikki Dangles another drop pass to King of Apes. King of Apes over to Nikki Dangles who can't get the shot away. Benito to King of Apes but intercepted by Piku Roger. Looks like he doesn't have a ton of stamina. Makes the move. Two moves on Domi but the pass back gets intercepted by Nikki Dangles and time the biggest factor here as uh I guess Domi feeling a little bad for the guys in the bench not getting to be able to touch the puck. He sends it right into their faces. He's a nice guy. Everyone needs to have a little bit of love and Domi shared it right there. But that was a potential chance there from Piku Roger. I kind of wonder if maybe the lack of support back, guys still getting back because of that stamina, maybe impacted that play. It was kind of a 1v3 there and there wasn't a lot he could do there on that chance. Yeah, it did his utmost, but in the end, you said it, I think the support simply wasn't there for Goons, and we always seemingly see it there for Adreds here, but that's a nice turnover. Jay Toro now trying to get something going back. Looks like he may have been looking for Lightning, but they still have the puck down low. Unable to contain it. Keskitalo now. Jay Toro doing his best as a, you know, how much of a great offensive player he is. They just can't handle the puck for too long. Cascatalo gets the intercept, but will be forced to reset here. And with about two minutes left, it's hard to see Goons getting three goals at this stage of the game. You just kind of want to try to, uh, you know, get one, get something to build on going into this next game. Lightning over to Kroketsi, sent over through the crease there, but no one was home. Nikki Dangles up the right wing side, has Villapoika. Nikki Dangles cuts in and shot on. Vincona will play that out, just trying to kind of finish this one off. Last minute, Piku Roger into the zone, beats two defensemen wide, but can't get to the net. Jay Toro now. To Cascatalo, can't get the shot on. Lightning not there for the rebound. Benito enters the zone, sent over. Looks like it hit someone. He was looking for Nikki Dangles, but the puck changed direction. Good defensive positioning. Domi, great job on the back end. Looked like he was about 1v2 right there and still was able to make the defensive play. Benito sends it in, but that will go for icing with 31 seconds left. Yeah, and you know, Sid, I think you kind of mentioned that this game, in terms of the result, may be a little bit out of reach here, you'd assume, with 31 seconds and a three-goal deficit. But if you're Goons, you kind of just want to hope to get a goal here, maybe carry some momentum here going in the game, too. 
Great pinch there from Jator. We'll keep it in. Piku Roger will get pressed off the puck. Lightning back to Kriketsi. Kriketsi to Keskitalo and to Lightning. Nice puck movement here, but they just can't get a chance out of it. Eight Reds seeming to know what they're going to do before they even do it. Sent up by Finn Cohn, and that's being some numbers here. Piku Roger, shot on, goes just wide. Jay Toro picks up the puck, looking for the shot, and the deflection was stopped by Lightning. And one more chance. Krakatsi can't get the shot away. And Atrex will pick up the victory. Three to nothing. Faze getting his third shutout in just five games on this regular season. And Atrex continuing the hot start that they've been on. Undefeated still. It will not be broken yet, Sid. And what a game there from H Reds. It was kind of one of those games where after the first period, it was pretty even. No team could really seem to grab that momentum by the horns. And in the second period, I think things were pretty even. But as things went on, the momentum continuously started to kind of lean in the favor of H Reds. And I feel like the turning point in this game was when Goons had that power play. They weren't really able to get any chances. And right when H Reds killed that off, but Edo comes out of the box finds a way to score, and then after that, it was all H-Reds, and it just felt like Goons, whenever they had those chances, they were never really able to take advantage of them more times than not, and, and even credit that to the great defense of H-Reds, some of the saves made by FaZe, just doing what they continue to do season in, season out, putting that defense, stopping a team from doing what they want to do, and then turning the great offense from that, and I mean, a great effort from Goons, but H-Reds just showing why they are the back-to-back -back champs coming in and just a great display for them here overall. Yeah, and I think, you know, really, it, it, it seemed close even when H-Reds had that one one nothing lead, but the second kind of, or yeah, yeah the second that it, it, it expanded a bit or the second Goons maybe felt some of that desperation, all of a sudden you just saw H-Reds, you know, continue to get chance after chance after chance and you talked about you know the defense of Atreds. I think that was really what it came down to Goons had some zone time they got the puck in the zone they looked to get uh, you know some shots here and there but they, they couldn't get any of those quality opportunities because Atreds were just simply all over them time and time again and th those those kind of higher percentage plays simply weren't there because the defense of Atreds got right in the face of those possible puck recipients here as a uh, Looks like uh, Benito maybe getting a, a little bit of chirping going on for potentially taking a goal away from Philip Poyka right there as he uh, got that rebound away. I was just kind of looking at the cursor action right there. And King of Apes, a very uh, very animated guy, very much a, a very funny guy as well. As we, as you know, P-Major, we had a very long conversation with him prior to uh, uh, the second broadcast of the finals last season. And uh, he uh, definitely has a lot of character in him. Yeah, and that's so, what's so fun about H-Reds is obviously they're a team with a lot of class, a lot of confidence, but they're just an entertaining group of guys. You know, you talk to guys like King of Apes, like you mentioned, you talk to Benito or Nikki Dangles. None of these guys are ever shy, really, about what is on their mind. They'll tell you what they think, but they do so in a way that doesn't come off as arrogance. It comes off as honesty. They'll tell you, hey, I know that we might have won three to nothing, but that wasn't our best hockey. I know we can do better. We've seen them say that plenty of times before. They expect that really high level from themselves and they're just a really fun group of guys to talk to and be around yeah. and you know you can kind of just get that feeling from the way they play they just have so much cohesion on the ice you saw that there in game one and something that was interesting only one shot in period one and only one shot in period three for goons we talked about that defense absolutely stellar there once again for h red so goons gonna have to find some answers offensively here going going into the second game yeah, and we'll set the stage for the second game after just a brief intermission and a word from our sponsors. Don't. All right, welcome back here as we prepare for uh, the second game between H Reds and Goons, kind of reflecting upon that first game and how it kind of went. You know, felt very close at times, but as is, you know, many, many things that happen, you know, H Reds eventually taking that advantage, taking that stranglehold, just like a vice grip, slowly, slowly crushing their opponent and then winning that one by a score of three to nothing here. So, what do you kind of think uh, any adjustments needed uh, by Goons here in the second game to be able, uh, you know, to take it back to Atreus and perhaps, you know, at least pick up a point, if not a win? Yeah, and I love how you kind of segued into that because I think the biggest thing for Goons is 
getting those shots on net. Obviously, it's hard to when you're not really able to establish a lot of that zone time, but another common trend with age reds because of that stellar defense that they play, you're typically not going to get more time on attack than them. You're going to have to take advantage when you are in the offensive zone, and I think the biggest thing is emphasizing on giving yourself as many opportunities as possible. Obviously, you don't want to necessarily take bad shots if there isn't that lane there. If there's a lot of guys kind of collapsed in front of the net, you might hold it and try to cycle it around to get something open, but if you have that little bit of space, if you have that look, don't be afraid to put that shot on net. You're not really going to get a lot of opportunities against a team like Atres because like I kind of mentioned, there's only so much zone time to go around with them being so stellar in the neutral zone defensively so i wouldn't be shocked if goons maybe kind of tried to go back to that rebound a little bit got a few shots on that you never know what can happen when you put that puck on a goalie might see them be a little bit more aggressive here with their shot selection in game two yeah, absolutely. I'd say their best chance might have been that one coming in the first period, which is the rebound that was sitting right there for, I believe, it was Kroketsi on the doorstep here. But this will be the second game between uh, H-Reds and Goons coming up after that. Of course, we'll have HV71 taking on YMCA Esports. But, you know, H-Reds here looking to continue their undefeated streak to start the season. Goons looking to kind of, you know, at least get a point here and not fall, you know, too much further down. They had a good start. This will be... Uh, this will be their uh, one third point in the season after this series. They came in today with eight games played. So already with the way the scheduling worked out, this will be goons uh, one third point in the season. So they definitely want to try to get, you know, at least another point out of this game because I mean, you know, fortunately for them, they won't have to take on eight reds again until uh, potentially a playoff matchup. But at the same time, we talk about how important those uh, points are early on in the season. And if you're goons again, having 10 games played already, you know, you're, you're, va you're quickly approaching that midway point in the season here so puck drop second game of two between h reds and goons goons in the white and h reds of course well you guessed it in the red but coming in low is lightning and jay toro loses the puck for a split second that could have been dangerous right there as h reds have possession in their own end it's like debris on the ice not too sure if it's a helmet or what but we'll get that cleared up right now as we have an offside early on yeah, and something that I'm going to be really interested to see is how Goon starts out here in this first period. Obviously, game one not going the way they hoped it would, but a rather close game there through most of that 40 minutes. And it was like in the third period, Atres kind of hit the takeover button. So it's going to be interesting to see how Goons come out. They really try to get aggressive to get that first goal. Right now with the puck in the zone, King of Apes sent over to Nikki Dangles, takes the shot that was blocked away by Kriketsi. Jay Toro now. Looking for some space. Nice quick pass. Keskitalo has it in the zone. Piku Roger with the puck for a brief moment. Looked like he may have tried to take a shot, but it was broken up. Nikki Dangles, nice play right there. Got Kriketsi sort of overcommitting to one side. Almost had some space in the middle. Jay Toro now with the puck. Goons, he needs some puck support. There he goes behind the net to Kriketsi. The sauce out front, bit dangerous, but Lightning did grab it. But once again, the defensive presence at the blue line from h -Reds, disrupting Goons, not allowing them to establish an attack. King of Apes sent over to Nikki Dangles, but they'll have to reset. Domi and King of Apes playing with it on the back end, and King of Apes will opt to go for the dump. They are offside, however, but Nikki Dangles will pursue it and just get that whistle and gets hit from behind for his troubles. Yeah, and you know, some players kind of differ on that opinion. Some will back off and just try to get set defensively, while others would rather just have that face off in the neutral zone to give yourself a chance to get back on offense. Fortunately, it doesn't pan out for them there, but kind of interesting there. He decided to go for that and be aggressive rather than letting Goons have that possession. Lightning now with the pickoff, and Piku Roger coming the other way. Sent down low. Will be taken away by Domi, and just like that, coming back the other way for eight treads. Filipoika enters his own, and Nikki Dangles in puck support has it. Sent back to King of Apes, looking to go the opposite way, but hit his own man in front in Villapoika. Nikki Dangles, great forechecking presence. They can't hold the puck in, and here they come. Lightning with some space, makes a move to the middle, but immediately collapsed upon for his trouble zone. Nikki Dangles gets decked in the neutral zone, but his team getting it back the other way. So taking a hit to make a play and almost getting some offense out of it, but Goon's in possession once again. Lightning gets the puck in, trying to beat Domi wide, but a great defensive stick. Lightning now. Get that puck out. What a pass over to the middle. Keskitalo just unable to get a stick on it. Lightning now. Domi once again. Just excellent job on the boards. Well, he makes a bit of an errant pass there. Jared Toro will have it. But not for long as once again the defensive presence at the line disrupts the play. And Atred's just continuing to shut things down. Jay Toro now in a bit of trouble. 
Tries to make a pass away. That will go all the way down for icing. And you can just see the layers of pressure that Atreids like to put on, whether they're forechecking, whether they're trying to hold the opponent's blue line, the red line, their own blue line. It's just relentless. Yeah, and that's what's so impressive, and I think that's what makes this HRS defense so dynamic is that they have that ability to throw different looks at you. They'll back off and throw all five of the blue line, and all of a sudden, next possession, they have both wingers and maybe even the center sometimes pressuring up. You see that example right there, there's then. Wow, a shot on once again, just seemingly coming out of nowhere. Villapoyka getting the pass from down low, wrists that one home on the blocker sorry sorry on the glove side of fincona once again hreds taking a one nothing lead yeah i didn't even get a chance to pass the baton over to you there one minute goons looked like they were trying to break it out and get into the offensive zone and then all of a sudden that defense we were talking about stepping up being a little bit more aggressive after sitting back caused that turnover and gives himself a chance they score on it right there sid and that was a perfect example of what we were talking about how hreds uses that defense throws different looks at you and more often than not when they do cause that turnover they're going to take advantage of that op offensive chance speaking of taking advantage here's villapoika partial breakaway shot on forehand looks like it was deflected up high by the blocker domi now over to king of apes who gets an off balance shot away right now goons in possession trying to get that puck out but here comes the four checking pressure domi has it to benito Benito, what a pass across! King of Apes capitalizes on the backhand. A sweet sauce to the middle and a beautiful finish from King of Apes. And at a loss for words, what a play from Atreds. That was five-star hotel food service-esque delivery on that pass there to King of Apes. It does not get much better than that. Threads the needle perfectly placed on the right defenseman stick there of h res in king of apes and sin oh man i mean we kind of talked about goons wanting to get that fast start not ideal they let up that goal in the turnover then h res with probably the prettiest play of the day so far with that one what a move and a well-deserved two nothing lead here for the team in red yeah it was an absolutely insane play it almost looked like the puck that barely even touched the ice by the time king of apes backhanded that one in and a little bit of flair coming out from Atreids. Now the hip checks getting thrown out. A shot blocked, and here they come the other way. Two on one developing. Villapoika with Nikki Dangles. Villapoika looking for the low shot. Goes uh, a little bit wide. Might want to get a new stick from the bench. Domi has it, though. Sent down low. Villapoika can't move it quick enough. And Goons now with the puck on the counterattack. Kriketsi looking for some space. Hits Keskitalo. Keskitalo gets in. Can't put the shot on. Now Piku Roger does, but not enough... Uh, of a rebound there for Lightning to follow up on, and the period ends anyway. And yeah, I think spectacular goals and a great way to put that there. We're actually getting a highlight of uh, one of the best plays of the period. Yeah, a beautiful saucer pass there to Benito to King of Apes for the second goal. And you kind of get another look at it. And something I kind of want to touch on, Sin, is at the open, we kind of talked about what kind of separates this H Reds team from some of the other teams in the ECL. And we talked about their composure, but I think something else that you could really attest to some of that success is. We need our ability just to hit the takeover button and just slam the gas and pull away from another team. I mean, for the first 15 minutes of this game, this was close. It felt like neither team could really take momentum. Goons had a few chances that didn't capitalize on, or H Reds had a few chances that they weren't able to see through. And then all of a sudden, it just took that one goal, and they have been off to the races ever since. Very similar to that game one, where in period one, it was pretty close. Nothing really was happening for either team. And all of a sudden, the H Reds killed off that power play from Goons, got the first goal of the game, and then took over from there. And I think that's what is so big with them is that we haven't really seen anyone be able to counter that when Atreus takes that momentum is so so hard to stop absolutely and I think they firmly have it here and even though it is only the second period they do have that 2-0 lead and if you're goons you don't want to panic yet because that'll just open up more space but at the same time you haven't been able to generate a whole heck of a lot speaking of which Atreus really picking up where they left off right in there on the attack lightning tries to get it ahead to Piku Roger but it was disrupted for a bit and that will put them offside yeah, and I think for what you mentioned, that's why putting the puck on that is so, so big. Obviously, you don't want to sacrifice defense for offense because you are down by two goals. But at the same time, you have to give yourselves as many opportunities as you can. So if they have that clean look, don't be shocked if they put it on that. Definitely there is King of Apes predicting a pass to the middle when a uh, belly first Brent Burns out to disrupt the pass, which unfortunately for him never came. So just kind of slid head first into his own goalie there, just kind of saying hi. You know, seeing how he's doing. He hasn't had a whole lot to work with so far. I think only one registered shot for Goons so far in that first period. Benito now. 
Entering the zone, sent down low, but Jator will retrieve it. Atreds backs off for the time being. Uh, pass right there to a uh, bit of no one there for Peaky Roger, and Atreds have it back in on the attack. Sent back to Domi. Goes back down. Nice bit of L-skating against the board to protect. Villapoika looking for the shot. Tries again. Was disrupted twice. Good defense coming out from Goons. But the four check. Nikki Dangles brings it in but can't hold the line. And I believe Villapoika may have been a step offside there as they tried to transition in. Yeah, and I think this is really a big time here for Goons. 14-23 to go, approaching the halfway point of this game. You kind of mentioned this, and you're only down by two, so you don't have to really get desperation mode yet, but you cannot let Atreus get this third goal. This next goal could very well decide who's going to win this game. They cannot let Atreus have it if they don't have a chance. Right there was a dangerous look as Benito got the shot away, and it almost uh, popped right out to Nikki Dangles on the doorstep there. But Goons got to get something going here. They're trying, and they just cannot get possession of the puck in the offensive zone. It's just the hunger coming out from Atreus to get those loose pucks again. Tried to pass it across and was intercepted. Given Chase was Villapoika right there, and Kriketsi and Jay Toro able to work that one out. It's Kriketsi. Sent to Keskitalo, but intercepted Villapoika once again. will have a partial breakaway. L skates. Oh, my goodness. But Finn Kona with the save. Villapoika couldn't fool him by going back across his body. Massive save from Finn Kona. Remember that one if Goons are able to get a couple goals here coming up. And you took the words right out of my mouth. Could that be the play that Goons needed to maybe get the momentum back on their side? A big breakaway save and then the icing right afterwards. Goons would be huge if they scored here. And if they do, it's on the back of that big save by Finn Kona. Yeah, huge, huge uh, faceoff win from Benito, who now leads the rush back the other way, getting that puck down low. Behind the net, kicked out front to Nikki Dangles, who can't get the shot away. Good defensive presence by Piku Roger. It's a pass there, but not enough uh, mustard on it right there. Villapoika back coming the other way, trying to get the shot away. Has a rebound look. Vincona will play it out. Lightning up the Piku Roger. Nice bit of work. Takes the shot on. Haven't seen a lot of that from Goons, but you got to figure they should try a bit more of that. There simply isn't an, uh, They're not getting the looks that they want. Jay Toro. It's an off balance shot. Counterattack, and that will be offside there as the first initial pass was labeled for Nikki Dangles, but Fulapoika, eh, just a little bit in the way, get, got possession of it instead. Yeah, and you know, Sid, I, I know the Goons haven't been able to get that offensive generation that you kind of mentioned, but I do think that it's good that they've slowed the momentum of H-Reds down a little bit. They got those two goals in the second, and ever since then, things have kind of simmered down a little bit on the h red side. So if Goons can kind of keep that up and find a way to cut this deficit in half, it would be huge for them going into the third. But so far, they've done one part of the job, but you have to find a way to get that puck in the net. Yeah, when you're playing a team like h Reds, just about baby steps, all the little victories that you could take from it. You got to try to, you know, compound those into some success. But the problem for, uh, you know, Goons is the time is against them right now. About five minutes left in this second period here. You got to think they would love, to, like, as you said, to get that one to cut this lead in half before the period ends here. Just see what they're able to do. But h Reds doing a great job still on the defensive end. Nikki Dangles has it. Slow shot looking for the rebound. Villapoika was there, but they couldn't co uh, collect it. King of Apes now. Does a good job avoiding the forecheck of Piku Roger to break this one in himself. Gets laid out, but Domi jumping right back in there to keep the pressure alive. King of Apes will be injured. Picked up the new stick from the bench. But once again, Goons unable to turn that into offense. Nice play by Lightning, enters the zone, but King of Apes just says, no thank you, plays the body, bumps him out. Nice job by Piku Roger, will force a turnover, but unable to even get a shot on net right there. They couldn't start the cycle, they couldn't get a shot away, and once again, another squandered opportunity for Goons. Lightning, Piku Roger trying to find the middle, it's just, no, nothing, nothing, nothing there. h Reds are right there every single time for it, and can't help but think Goons may need to start trying something different. Nikki Dangles almost getting the puck. Great job by Jay Toro on that two on one. But here comes Piku Roger. One on one against King of Apes. Sent out front once again. And Benito intercepts it. And the period ends as it began. Or no, sorry. Well, I mean, yeah, as it began in the in the sense that it's still a lead there for Atreds. But two nothing after two here. And Goon still really unable to get a whole lot of offense. Yeah, and I think you really have to credit the defensive efforts of Atreds not allowing Goons to really get a lot of opportunities. And you kind of saw it there on those last few possessions in the last four or five minutes. It feels like once Goons gets into the offensive zones, they kind of stall out once they get into around that half corner board point. They usually have it through one of their wingers, but they're not able to cycle it down low. They 
you don't really have that option to bring it back up to the top because then you have those two wingers kind of pressuring the defense and it turns into a turnover that way. It feels like whatever Goons looks for, Atrets has an answer for it. And that's kind of why I was saying going into this game, maybe you do just kind of prioritize whenever you do get that open space, put the puck on that because you're not really getting anything as of now with what you're doing in the offensive zone. So it's going to be interesting to see if Goons maybe just tries to switch something up. Obviously, you're still in this game, just a two-goal deficit of 20 minutes to go. But like I said earlier, you got to find a way to put the puck in the net. So a huge 20 minutes for Goons. Let's see if they can find a comeback here soon. Yeah, I mean, you said it is only a two-goal deficit, but it is a two-goal deficit against eight dreads, and you got to feel like there's a bit of that intimidation factor here. As a, you see Goons, the second they try to get some chances, we'll hold that thought here. we got a two-on-one developing, three-on-two now, passed over to Benito, the shot on! And uh, King of Apes gave us a little suspense with the camera work right there, but Finn Kona did come up with the save right there as we have an offside here early on in the third. You never want to hate keeping things a little bit dicey. It's good for the entertainment value every now and then, but nevertheless, I know Goon's happy to keep that puck out of the net. We kind of mentioned how that next goal could be big, and they're going to have to find a way to get it here. If Hrets goes up 3 to nothing, you kind of mentioned that intimidation factor. And there's a goal from Villapoika just walks down Main Street, dodges the flying poke check of Finn Kona, and once again, a 3 nothing lead here for Matreds. In the third period, Goons once again really on the ropes here, and it just got worse. That was right on cue what we were talking about. That third goal being so big for either H Reds or the first goal being so big here for Goons. It's H Reds that find that third goal. And I think you said it perfectly there, Sid. The, the hole was rather deep going into the sec or into this third period, rather. Now it gets dug even deeper, down three to nothing. Not really a lot of offensive chances so far for Goons. So H Reds in a really good position. But you don't want to doubt Goons. This is a crazy game. We've seen crazy things happen. They can maybe get the scoring going. Never want to doubt a team getting too quick. Yeah, absolutely, but it's getting incredibly dicey here, and they haven't really shown a whole lot of offensive prowess in this one, just com being completely stifled. The physical game picking up, but again, none able to turn that in offense as Domi keeps the play alive. What an individual effort by him, and Nikki Dangles now has it down low. <laughs> Looking for the Michigan, of course. Here come Atrus. They're feeling comfortable and confident. They're looking to skill it up and, you know, just sh shove it in Tyson Nash's face a little bit. Uh, great play by Nikki Dangles, forcing the turtle, looking for the shot. Oh, the follow-up opportunity, and great save coming out from Finn Kona. Now behind the net, working it down low. Nikki Dangles goes off the post here and there, just swarming right now. Benito to Villapoika, intercepted by Lightning, who looks to get it out, and King of Apes will be uh, gripping his controller a bit tight after that frustrating uh, not picking up the puck. Big hit from Piku Roger there, but once again, they're unable to get the follow-up opportunity, though they do keep it in, sent down low. Piku Roger can't get it. Now he retrieves it. Shot on, and finally someone shot on with some presence out front, but no rebound given up. And simply that that style might be just a little too little, too late for Goons. They're finally bringing it out, but we're almost halfway through this third period and still a three goal deficit. Yeah, it might be about a period too late here, unfortunately. As I like the idea of getting that shot on that. There's not an open pass available, so put it on. You never know what can happen, but unfortunately, just the placement of where that was, a pretty routine save there for FaZe, and there wasn't anything there for the rebound. But I like the idea. Get that on. You never know what can happen, especially if that pass isn't there. Like I said, Sid, there's still some time, but Goons, they want to have a chance to come back. they got to act quickly. Yeah, absolutely. And... Here come H Reds on the attack. Villa Poika now looking to maybe L skate a bit to the middle, but the presence on his back was a bit too much. That four checking pressure from Nikki Dangles, though, once again almost keeping it alive. Piku Roger can't get the puck in, tries the move, but it's immediately taken away. Benito over to Domi with speed. Over to the middle, Nikki Dangles just couldn't handle that pass. King of Apes takes it back, and here come H Reds right in on the, in the attack again. Benito down low to Nikki Dangles, can't retrieve it, but Domi's right there for support. Sent back low, down low again. Looked like Nikki Dangles tried a quick wrap around of that bouncing puck in Villapoika. Almost intercepting that. Lightning now. Bodied off the puck. Sent out front. No one home besides Domi, who now gets that puck up the boards. Nikki Dangles, Benito, two on one, three on one if they hurry. Shot on low, shot rebound. Followed up both Benito and Villapoika taking wax at it, but not enough bounce on that rebound is uh, Fincona. Does a good job steering clear. And away to Villa Poika now. Offside for a second, but it didn't, didn't come to fruition. Benito behind the net now. Sent out front, no one home. 
Nikki dangles. Oh, quick shot on that short side. It bounces out, but Villapoika can't get a stick on it. Nikki dangles back behind the net once again. A little bit of uh, board work from himself. King of Apes getting forced out of the zone by Piki Roger, but slows him up enough for his defensive partner, Domi, to get there and retrieve it. Now Benito enters the zone once again with King of Apes in support. King of Apes retrieves it along the half wall, fighting for it, gets hit from behind. That will be two minutes. Bit of a frustration penalty you got to feel from Goons, who simply couldn't get the puck off of the sticks of A-Treads there. Yeah, that was uh, double damage there, so to speak, there is Jay Toro, I believe, that is taking the penalty for that. But nevertheless, I think you kind of pinned that perfectly. A bit of a frustration penalty, and you can't really blame Goons. You know, you've had about six periods here. You weren't able to find a goal so far. Hrets has been phenomenal defensively, and with the way they play, it can be mentally taxing when you're doing everything you can. You're trying to find answers, and this whatever you do doesn't seem to work. So you kind of have to factor that in. Playing a team like this, the way that they play, it can kind of get to you mentally. Bit of a side of that right there, unfortunately, for Goons. It's a pretty good penalty kill so far here for Goons as uh, they are, of course, looking to attack as well, but they, got, they also have to clear it because you can't uh, allow Atreds to get anything more. Villapoika now sent out front to Benito, unable to find that one and put it on. Domi now sent over to Benito. Gets it in low as Nikki Dangles now battling for the puck. He does retrieve it. Villapoika following up behind. Domi in on the attack, but here we go. Perhaps a 2-on-1, but an excellent poke from Benito. Stops that in its track. And they're in on the attack. 4-on-1, 3-on-1. And the, shot, the pass across broken up. They're unable to get a chance because of it. Now sent to cross. Jay Toro back to Lightning. We're back to even strength. What a move by Lightning. Now Piku Roger shot on. Unable to get the puck. Jay Toro now. Sent over to Lightning. Broken up by Benito and another penalty taken. The desperation, you could feel it. That was a bit of a stick lift spam right there. And Cascatalo will be going to the box right there as he ends up getting the hook. And once again, eight reds go to the power play. Yeah, and just as Cascatalo trying to get something, you know you're probably not winning this game, but if you can just break a goal open, get on the scoreboard, you take it. And that's just Cascatalo just trying to make something happen in that puck battle. Fortunately, what it gets him to cost the penalty. Here's a two-on-one here. Piku Roger now take the shot away. Rebound! But Tomi's right there. I believe that was him. And uh, Kriketsi there on the attack. Villapoika with Nikki Dangles. Sent down low to Villapoika. Out front to Benito who fans on the shot. In tight opportunity. And they keep it alive. What a pass. What a play in Villapoika! What a goal right there. Adrian pouring it on. Getting a power play goal. Four to nothing here late in the third. Pouring it on and it's pouring smoothly, Sin. H-Reds just clicking at all cylinders right now. And how about that play? We hadn't really seen much from Nikki Dangles. We talked about earlier how everyone contributes and it can really be anyone's day in the spotlight. We haven't heard much from Nikki Dangles, but a great setup pass to his fellow winger in Villapoika to make that play happen. And the result was plenty in hand, but why not give your left winger in Villapoika a hat trick to end this night off? A great job there from h to extend this lead even further. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, well, it may not be done either. Here comes Benito with King of Apes once again. I mean, they're just still going for offense, 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 and once again, Villapoik, another quick one. Benito can't cap, or sorry, couldn't connect on that pass, and that will do it there. So another game, another victory, another shutout for FaZe. His fourth on the season here, and... You know, you, you kind of mentioned it. You know, we hadn't been able to, at least on the offensive side of things, call out Nikki Dangle's game, you know, two, 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 or, yeah, I mean, a whole lot for getting on the score sheet at least. But the fact of the matter is, I mean, a couple of years ago, that may have been a problem uh, when it came to Atreds. But now with, uh, you know, all the kind of little things that Nikki Dangle's brings to the table, the things he does, the way he forechecks, the way he defends, you know, him not being on the scoring sheet is just fine. And that's sort of evidenced by the two-time champion Atreds here now is, that was a quick turnoff there as uh, we won't be able to perhaps get a look at some of those replays. But you know, again, just a tremendous two-game set right there. Two shutouts for FaZe and a dominant performance against a team that we're theorizing, you know, maybe could, you know, give them a run for their money as they did in the playoffs. But Atreds kind of just dusted themselves on, had a bit of a bone to pick with, uh, you know, some of the rest of the ECL after uh, some questions were being thrown around after they uh, won those two games narrowly against a non-playoff team last season in ZSC, both of them going to overtime.
Yeah, and keep in mind as well that they played Fallon Coal Miners, a team that was, I guess you could call them the mystery team coming in. Well, one of those games, it was decided by a one to nothing score. So we were kind of wondering like, hey, maybe eight trends. Is there maybe that little bit of an open window of opportunity for them this season? As you know, they usually get off to these hot starts, not so far. Well, hey, you kind of mentioned that bone to pick. I think they picked it quite well with two dominant performances over a fellow playoff team in Goons. And I love also that you kind of mentioned things with Nicky Dangles, how that two-way play was kind of exemplified. And I think you can say that about all these guys. You can say that about Villa Poica as well, who we didn't hear a lot from in the first game with Benito getting all three goals. Both of the wingers can just contribute so much defensively. And I think that's really what has put this team over the top. That's the difference between... ECL 12 when they were, or excuse me, ECL 11 when they were swept by uh, for London or formerly Philadelphia to ECL 12 where they were able to turn the tables and reverse sweep in that series. And then last season when they were able to beat for London in five games, I think when they were able to really just get all five guys playing that two-way hockey, playing just as phenomenally defensively as they do offensively, it's put this HRS team over the top and so far, we're two and a half seasons in, and there's yet to be a team to really find an answer for it, son. Yeah, we get another look at that uh, breakaway that uh, you, you can't help but say shouldn't have been yet. Two defensemen back, and Villa Boyka just kind of walked right in between him. You can see King of Apes was kind of doing his uh, little version of chirping by continuously zooming in on their names. But, yeah, it's just something where Villa Poica just, again, walked down Main Street there and was able to capitalize. That kind of felt like a big, big turning point in that game, a situation where Atria had seemingly made something out of nothing there to get a massive tally in that one. But... After that, you know, two games, H Reds continue their undefeated streak here, move to 6 and 0 on the season and uh we're going to now begin to set the stage here for HV71 taking on YMCA Esports. We'll be back after a brief break. <laughs> 